Welcome to Sunday Night Live. I'm Harold Herring, and that's my fine wife, Bev, and Super Bowl Sunday. But it's also a sensational Sunday because of God and the Word. And that's right. It's His day to be in church and to sing praises to His holy name. Man, but if you're going to watch the Super Bowl later, let me just, I can tell you who's going to win. I can. Team Absolutely. with the most points. That's the team's going to win. Um, but let me just give you a quarterback analogy. If a quarterback's timing is off mm. tonight or anytime, they're going to have a bad day with more interceptions than touchdowns. Now, that's clearly evident in a lot of the NFL games that I saw highlights of during the season. But, uh, and it'll be true in Atlanta tonight. It will be. Um, it, it definitely will be true in Atlanta. If that's what happens. That's football. But that's football. In life. You maybe not promise not to tell the quarterback joke. That's, well, you don't remember it anyway, which is good because it <laughs> caught me off guard a well, year or two one ago. One of the best laughs I ever heard him make was my the quarterback joke. joke. In life, if your timing's off, you can miss possibilities and opportunities for success. Right. Time is critically important in life. Something can be a good idea. It, it can be a great idea. It can even be a God idea. But if it's not in God's timing, well, it won't be successful. Here are seven facts we need to know about God's timing. That's right. Number one, the Holy Spirit gives you the timing. Have you ever wondered if it's the right time to make a career change? to ask somebody to marry you, to present your ideas to supervisors or any other important decision like that. Knowing when to speak is equally important to knowing what to say. So true. In Acts 1, verses 7 and 8 in the Message Bible, it says, He told them, you don't even get to know the time. Timing is the Father's business. What you'll get is the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be able to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all over Judea and Samaria, even to the ends of the world. There is absolutely one key to making the right decisions at the right time. And it's the unction of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's that little something deep inside of you that means now. Now's the time. Sometimes it'll say, not now. That's right. So you need to discern what the Spirit's saying. Have you, have you ever started to do something, but it didn't feel right in your stomach? Uh, it wasn't because you ate too much guacamole. It's because the unction of the Holy Spirit is telling you it's not the right time to do what you were going to do. Amen. He's good. If you, if you like to be a mover and a shaker, you've probably experienced that unction to go ahead. Be glad because God's speaking to you. Amen. God moves at a different pace than man. However, when you do sense His encouragement to move, then by all means, move. Move then. Move quickly after following the directions and instructions that you receive from the Holy Spirit. When we obey the voice of the Holy Spirit, we not only avoid trouble, but we make decisions that will succeed instead of fail. Hallelujah. What was it? Dr. J. E. Murdoch used to say um, that uh, if you ask him any question, yeah. he'd always say, "Listen to the voice of the Holy, of the Holy Spirit. Spirit." That's right. That was his answer to every question you ask. Yeah. Just listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. That was Dr. Mike Murdoch's dad. Yeah. He passed away at 99. I guess. Wow. Remarkable man. <laughs> Remarkable guy. Really. Number two, yeah. being in the wrong place at the right time. That sounds strange, but this is one of the devil's favorite tricks and traps. Having us where we shouldn't be in the wrong place, just in time to tempt us with an opportunity to do something wrong. To sin. <coughs> to sin, yeah. In 2 Samuel 11, verses 1 through 3 in the Classic Amplified, it says, In the spring, when kings go forth to battle, David sent Joab with his servants and all Israel. And they ravaged the Ammonites' country and besieged Rabeth. But David remained in Jerusalem. One night, David arose from his couch and was walking on the roof of the king's house when there he saw a woman bathing, and she was lovely to behold. 
David sent and inquired of the woman. One said, Is not that this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite? You King, know, yeah. King David's greatest mistake didn't start with the adultery with Bathsheba or the murder of Uriah or the cover-up. It started when he was in the wrong place at the right time for the enemy to bait him. You the know, scripture the, plainly states. Yeah. Let me say this. The King James translation of that verse says that of time the kings went to war, David tarried, tarried. in Jerusalem. That's right. He wasn't where he was supposed to be. That's it. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, that's the point I was going to make. Oh, okay. It says in the verse, you know, when they went to war, you know, to go forth, the kings go forth to battle. It says he sent somebody else. But David was supposed to be at war with his troops, leading and guiding them. And, you know, that was where he was supposed to be. So technically, he was in the wrong place at the right time for, for the, the enemy. enemy to set a trap. He did. And he, he did. did. And he fell for it. It was the right time for the enemy to tempt him. It was the right time for the lust of the flesh to overwhelm him. You ever put yourself in a position where you shouldn't be? If you have, you're just opening the door for the enemy. That's right. To cause Havoc trouble. Havoc in your life. Yep. Talking to a co-worker of the opposite sex who gives you the attention <clears throat> excuse me, that you feel you're not receiving from your spouse. Perhaps you've been in a position where you could take something from your employer that you thought they would never miss. And then rationalize it away. Yep. <clears throat> As if they actually owe it to you because you've under been un underpaid and under unappreciated. That's it. You're cruising the internet. You inadvertently land on a pornographic page, but you stay for a visit and subsequently stop by that site from time to time. Wrong thing. If King David had been in God's timing. That's right. Where he was supposed where to be. Where he was supposed to be. Then things would have been different for him, mm. his family, and all of Israel. If you're where you're supposed to be, things will go well for your family. That's right. But if you put yourself in a position where you shouldn't be, then you're in trouble. It's, or it's, it's, setting yourself or up setting for Setting yourself trouble. up. It's, it's kind of like if you're an alcoholic and you've repented, reformed, you don't need to go to the bar to hang out with your buddies. That's it. If you, uh, if you were uh, addicted to drugs and you repented, you don't need to go to a meth house just to check on your old friends. It's not smart, not wise. Puts you in a, puts you in a position for the enemy Mm -hmm. to trick you, trap and, you. And really, we didn't put this scripture, but sometimes just doing something where it even gives the appearance of evil is not going to help you in life. It's true. Number three. Go. Go. Delay doesn't mean denial. That's right. In Habakkuk 2, verse 3, in the classic <clears throat> Amplified, it says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, and it hastens for the end fulfillment. It will not deceive or disappoint. Hallelujah. Though it tarry, wait earnestly for it, because it will surely come. It will not be behind hand on its appointed day. Over the 13 years after Ishmael was born, no doubt Abraham wondered if the promises of God mm -hmm. would ever come to pass. Joseph had been given a dream of ruling and reigning, and it looked impossible this dream looked impossible once he was sold into slavery. That's a whole great teaching. It is. I could go uh, into that. You when he's know standing on the block in that slave auction. That's right. And, 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 and that whole crowd is surveyed. And about Joseph, it says, he, he is, not was, he is a prosperous man. That's it. Strong. It's what's inside you. Yep. Prophet Samuel, Samuel anointed David to be king in Israel. But after being chased by King Saul for years, when Samuel died, he despaired and left Israel to go live with the Philistines. Mm. 
God wants us to understand that we are no different than any of the Bible characters we might be reading about. We can take heart in that. I love taking heart in that. That's better than taking heart in a situation that you might have heard of over here or heard of over there. If they were waiting the manifestation of their promise and it looked like it wasn't going to happen, when we read these Bible stories, it was all a matter of God's timing. I think I put this on the notes, but I was directed to write the following words and speak them here tonight. Tell my children to hold fast to the confession of their faith. Yes. What I have promised will come to pass. Delay does not mean denial. Hallelujah. And if you've been waiting for something to manifest, mm. you might want to circle that, put stars around it, and make it part of a confession. Father, I thank you that what you've promised me will come to pass. That's right. If we're standing on the Word of God, and He says, this is what happens, you know, when, we st when you stand on this word, then it is just not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And sometimes we may have to stand and having done all, still stand, but God's word never proves. It never fails. Never fails. And what does it say in Numbers 23, 19? That he's not a man that he should lie. That's right. But the devil. Oh, yeah is a liar and the father of lies. And, there is and no the truth is not in it. That's right. See, delay is a favorite weapon, deception of the enemy. Yeah. Because he seeks to tri tri trip us up, filling us with doubt. That's right. That's one of his greatest weapons. Deception and doubt. Mm. But, but you see, God can just be testing us. Yes. To build our character for the job that we have ahead. That's right. In Psalm 105, verse 19, I always love this. It's amazing. Psalm 105, verse 19, I chose a New Living Translation because it tells it all. It says, until the time came to fulfill his dreams, the Lord tested Joseph's character. You know, everything that happened to Joseph, I'm going to get off and run, I'm trying not to get off and running. No. Everything that happened to Joseph was all in a matter of a plan, even though it didn't look like it could possibly be a part of anybody's plan. God knew exactly what he was doing. And you know what? He knows exactly what he's doing in your life too. He, it may look like it is crazy impossible that the things that he told you were gonna come to pass, the things he promised, the things he put in your spirit, the things that you know to be true that are in the word, they just don't look like they're gonna happen. But I am telling you, you read some of these stories and you will, just be ignited on the inside that God can do anything, anything. Hallelujah. Makes you want to shout and run around the room like that. But the devil's says. game is yeah. creating doubt. That's right. For instance, he wants you to believe that salvation will never come to members of your family. That's right. And the enemy wants you to believe that deliverance from death will now never manifest in your life. Mm. But that's not what the Word says. That's right. It may want you to believe that your healing or that of a loved one will never happen. Mm -hmm. But that's not what the Word says. The enemy wants you, to, wants you to think that the job market is hopeless, that you'll never get a better job or, or higher job. paying position. But that's not what the Word says. That's right. See, the enemy wants us to think that the Lord is not interested in our needs or fulfilling the promises that He makes in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Or worse, the promise that the promises are for everybody else. But that's not true. That's right. He not loves true. to think, makes you think that it's happening for everybody, but not me. But it just simply is not true. In 2 Peter 3, 6, excuse me, 3, 9, I got that turned around. In the Amplified Bible, it says, The Lord does not delay and is not tardy or slow about what he promises. According to some people's conception of slowness, but he is long suffering, extraordinarily patient toward you, not desiring that any should perish, but that all should turn to repentance. He's very good about not giving up on people when it looks the worst. If you feel like you've been going through the fire, yes. that you've been to hell and back, then you need to hold on to the first part of that verse. That's right. You really do. The Lord does not delay and is not tardy or slow 
about what he promises. Amen. And somebody say, hallelujah. hallelujah. That's right. God does not delay. There may be times that the enemy, well, the enemy likes to see if he can hinder the arrival mm -hmm. of God's answers to the circumstances, situations, and problems that we're facing. But God always has a plan and he a does. way out. In Daniel 10, verses 12 through 14, this in the New Living Translation, it says, Then he said, Don't be afraid, Daniel, since the first day you began to pray for understanding Hallelujah. and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. I have come in answer to your prayer. But for 21 days, the spirit prince of the king of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me, and I let him, I left him there with the spirit of the prince of the king of Persia. Now I'm here to explain what will happen to your people in the future, for this vision concerns a time yet to come. We need to know that God hears yes. our prayers and that there's an answer. Yes. And our deliverance is on the way. Hallelujah. As you say, God is not sitting in heaven wringing his hands, wondering how to handle whatever situation we may be facing. God will make sure the answer is right on time. Right on time. Right Boy, they got time. some good gospel songs on that one. <laughs> yeah, right. Dolly Peep. He's, a, he's, he's an, an on time, time God. God. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like that song. I do too. Mm. That's why it's important that we read the Word, yes. obey the Lord, follow His instructions for living a good life. Mm. Never doubt. Because answers, directions, and deliverance are coming. Amen. Let me tell you something. I, it reminds me of um, something that when I was heard uh, uh, Zig Ziglar preaching one time. He goes, you know, I got home from a meeting, and he goes, I was watching the game. He's a big Dallas Cowboys guy because he was from Dallas. And he goes, I had peace of mind. I, I didn't ever have any fret. I didn't jump up and down on the sidelines. I'm thinking about the people tonight. Going to be jumping up and down on the sidelines, wondering which way it's going to go. He said, I had perfect peace of mind, he said, because I knew the Cowboys had already won. And you know, the thing of it is, is that, you know, when God says you won, then you don't have to jump up and down and worry and go, is this all going to turn out okay? You know, God's going to be there and it's going to be right on time. So that's why it's important to, like my husband said, follow his instructions for living the good life and not doubt because his answers and directions and deliverance will come at just the right time. It will. Hallelujah. Psalm 119, 60. Yes. In New the Living New Translation. I will hurry without delay to obey your commands. Amen. Even though you may be waiting for an answer, a manifestation, don't give in, give up, back down, sit down, quit, or walk away. Just keep expecting Amen. the manifestation. Because it's coming. Amen. Number four, our time is in his hands. In Psalm 31, verse 15, in the King James Version, it says, My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my foe and those who pursue me and persecute me. No matter what you've been <clears throat> going through, no matter how intense the battle, God's got your back. Hallelujah. As he delivers you from your enemies. And remember, He's always on time. The visual I catch, I'm sure you've seen a TV show or a movie where a little boy's coming home from school and bullies come up to him. And then all of a sudden, the bullies turn around and run the other way. And it's because his bigger brother is standing behind him, How shaking his fist at him. Well, the good news is our brother's behind us. Woo. <laughs> and we got a good one, too. And he's shaking his fist at the devil. <clears throat> Amen. So Amen. That's a good thing. I like it. Acts 1, verse 7 in the Classic Amplified says, He said to them, It is not for you to become acquainted with and know what time brings the things and the events of time and their definite periods or fixed years and seasons, their critical niche in time, which the Father has appointed, fixed, and reserved by his own choice and authority and personal power. Strong scripture. It is. If you know God, if you know God, you will come to know and sense his timing. And I want to say again right here, something can be a good idea 
It can be a great idea. It can, it can be, be a God, be a God idea, idea. But it needs to be in God's timing. Right. And it needs to be for you. Mm. I can think of instances where ministries made a mistake. Yeah. Because they, they, uh, they got ahead of God's timing. Or the idea wasn't, it was a great idea, a God idea, but it wasn't for them. That's right. And, and you, seen that. just because something's a good, great, or God idea, you need to make sure it's for you. And you need to make sure God's timing. Or else you get yourself. It's easy when you're a passionate a person to get all carried away with things. But what is God leading you to do? That's right. Ecclesiastes 9.11 in the New Century Version. Here's something else I've seen on this earth. Races aren't always won by those who run fast. Battles aren't always won by those who are strong. Wise people don't always have plenty of food. Clever people aren't always wealthy. Those who have learned a lot aren't always favored. God controls the timing of every event. He also controls how things turn out. We underline God controls the timing of every event. Mm. I'd also underline that last sentence too. He also controls how things turn out. That is so interesting. And wow. I so, mean, you, you can take heart if you feel like, well, there's no way that I, you know, am going to be able to win against this big conglomerate or whatever it is that you're facing. But God. But God. Two of my so, favorite words. I know. But God. That's the truth. So, you know, it's the scripture it quite a bit too. I looked at that one time. I'm going to do a teaching on that. I think but God is in the scripture something like 60 some times. Mm. But God. But I need to look it up again to make sure. I'm going to do that teaching. You can teach it with me. I, well, thank you. I'm inspired already. List, this is a list of seven keys found in Isaiah 49, 8 in the Amplified Bible, Classic Amplified. It says, Thus says the Lord, in an acceptable and favorable time, I have heard and answered you, and in a day of salvation, I have helped you. And I will preserve you and give you for a covenant to the people to raise up and establish the land from its present state of ruin and to apportion and cause them to inherit the desolate moral wastes of heathenism, their heritages. Hallelujah. You want to go through those I do. seven? Here are those seven things that are underlined in the scripture. But I kind of listed them out as well. First, in an acceptable and favorable time. Second, I have heard and answered you. Third, in the day of salvation, I have helped you. I heard you, I answered you. I've helped you. Fourth, I will preserve you. Fifth, I will give you a covenant for, them, for the people. Sixth, to raise you up and establish the land. And seventh, to cause an inheritance for the faithful ones. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Count us as faithful ones. And Number amen. five. I like this. Your timing includes deliverance. Yes. According good. to Strong's Concordance, the word salvation. This is good. Is the Hebrew word H3444. H3444. It's all. Mm, and I here's what it means. Away. Salvation, deliverance, prosperity, victory. Let me say that again. Salvation, deliverance, prosperity, victory. That word salvation is an all-encompassing. Yes, it is. Multifaceted to include everything we need. Absolutely. That's exciting. In Psalm 3, verse 8 in the King James, it says, Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. I like the New Living Translation of That's that. That's good. <laughs> which uh, of Psalm 3, it says, Victory comes from you, O Lord. May you bless your people. There you go. Never forget where your deliverance comes from. Never forget. Oh, let me change that. That's negative. Always remember. There you go. That's better to say it that way. Always remember where your deliverance comes from. Always remember who has enabled and empowered and enlightened you to do what you've done in your life. Mm. And, he's, and he's doing that so that you can do more with your life. That's right. Hallelujah. He delivers us from our old way of thinking and living. Ziegler used to call that stinking thinking. That's right. Stinking you thinking. Check up from the neck up. Yeah, That's I call it mental halitosis. <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> <clears throat> That's good, though. That's my phrase. 
The word for salvation that we found in Psalm 3.8 is also used in one of my husband's, for sure, favorite scriptures. He quotes this all the time. Exodus 14.13 says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians, <coughs> excuse me, let's be choked up every time. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. Hallelujah. That's a good one. That's a great scripture. New International Version of it says, Yeah. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm. And you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring mm. you. When? Today. 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 The Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Mm. Dead, doubt, unbelief, they're Egyptians. That's right. <laughs> and you got to believe that you can be delivered today. See, that's, that's what we need to expect. We need to rise in the morning expecting deliverance from every attack of the enemy, mm. victory in everything we put our hands to find to do. That's, you know, that's it. You know, when it tarries, and sometimes it does, healing and manifestation, and sometimes you can go through and go through things and go through things and go through things and go through things and go through things, and people feel like it's just never going to end. But there can be an end. We should never give up. The number enemies six. you see today, your creditors, debtors, yeah. you'll never mm -hmm. see again. But you must not be afraid. You've got to, as it says, stand firm and believe the deliverance, the deliverance from the Lord mm -hmm. will come to you today. That's right. Number six, this stay faithful. Stay, that's the next step. Faithfulness means not sitting around waiting on God to do something. That's it but moving faithfully and constantly looking for His guidance in all that you do. Because everything leads to the next step in time, right. right? In Colossians 4, verse 5, in the classic Amplified, it encourages us to do this. It says, Behave yourself wisely, living prudently and with discretion in your relations with those of the outside world, the non-Christians, making the very most of the time and seizing, buying up the opportunity. Everything we do is really a witness to somebody. Well, and how are we being faithful in it? I've shared this for years. <laughs> I remember when I read it and discovered it. You know, the scripture says, when you've done all you do, stand and mm -hmm. stand again. That, that is Ephesians not a 6. passive position. And the parallel that I've always drawn after I read it in a history book right. some years ago was that the Roman legion, the soldiers on the front line, their boots had spikes about a foot long. And they would put those spikes and get stuck down in the ground. They were standing. They weren't going anywhere. They weren't going anywhere. And they were anticipating the attack, and that was going to help them victory. Because if they started getting killed, it made it more difficult for the enemy to come over them to get the others. Wow. And it helped them in the victory. So, so when the Word says to stand... And stand again. I think it really means to aggressively anticipate the deliverance of the Lord. To aggressively anticipate the deliverance of the Lord that is We're coming blessed. our way. <clears throat> now, back on track. Okay. Making the very most of time and seizing buying up the opportunity. Mm -hmm. We encourage you to make a list each night of what you want to accomplish the next day. Assign a priority to the task. And be about business. Mm -hmm. And avoid time distractions. Yes. Uh, that will prevent you from achieving the things that you've purposed in your heart to achieve the next day. And, and some of those time distractions are people who want to spend time talking. I guarantee you tomorrow there will be a lot of time wasted in businesses all around the world, particularly in this country. People standing at the water fountain, standing at somebody's cubicle talking about the game of some commercial. And if you got a list of things you need to accomplish on Monday, hey, don't fall into that. You be about the business that you got before you. And if you list out what you're supposed to do that day, it'll make it a lot easier. It's true. See, what we have to understand is that in the next 24 hours, each of us will be given a precious gift. Not money, gold, silver, or real estate, but something far more valuable. Each of us be the recipient 
of 86,400 seconds or another day of life. The only restriction is that we have to spend it, invest it, or in some ways use every minute because there's no carryover. There's no carryover to the next day. There's no rollover benefit, as the phone companies would say. Faithfulness in doing our best mm. to use our day as wisely as possible is good stewardship. That's right. And we may get blessed for it. Yep. We're about to go into that. It's exciting. Ephesians 5, verses 11 through 16 in the message says, this is the encouragement <laughs> on not wasting time. It says, don't waste your time on useless work, mere busy work, the barren pursuits of darkness. Expose these things for the sham they are. It's a scandal when people waste their lives on things they must do in the darkness where no one will see. Rip the cover off those frauds and see how attractive they look in the light of Christ. Wake up from your sleep. Climb out of your coffins. Christ will show you the light, so watch your step. Use your head. Make the most of every chance you get. These are desperate times. If you're wanting to do something, get ahead. Sometimes motion does not mean you're making progress. It might be, you could, you, you know, it's like um, trying to get away on a rocking horse, you know. You've got a lot of motion, but you're not going anywhere. So the point is, you know, are we making the most of our time if we know that the Lord has sent us out on a journey? We encourage you to do a time survey. Yeah. Put time in 15-minute blocks. And now you don't have to list everything you do, but the main thing that you did in those 15 minutes, write down what you're doing. Then at the end of the day, then the week, do it at least a week. And see where you're putting your time. Mm -hmm. investing your time. On my cell phone, I get a message each week that tells me how much time I've spent on the internet, how much time I've spent uh, social media, how much time I've spent exploring the internet. And when I look at it, it generally it's less than the week before. And uh, except if I'm in waiting for somebody in a meeting in their office, or doctor's office, or kids to fly in. All right. Then it's a little higher, just being honest. In Ephesians 5.16, Classic Amplified, it says, making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. Manage your minutes to maximize your effectiveness mm -hmm. for the kingdom of God. Ecclesiastes 3.1 in the New King James Version, to everything there is a season, a time for per every purpose under heaven. It's up to us to discern by the Holy Spirit what those times are. This is an exciting one in number seven. Yeah. Redeem the time. Redeem the time. King Solomon, in all his wisdom, said something profound in Ecclesiastes 3.11. It says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. And King David had one of the greatest dynasties in history of Israel, because he trained his military commanders to understand the times and know what Israel should do. In 1 Chronicles 12.32, in the New Living Translation, it says, From the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives. All these men understood the signs of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. King Xerxes I, yeah. first, or, or King not only Hazawaris. understood, I'm sorry, <clears throat> No, I said, or he was also known as King Hazawaris. Yeah. He, he not only understood the importance of time, yes. but he understood, understood the importance of having his commanders, those close to him, that they also knew the importance of timing. Wise men. In Esther 1.13, in the classic Amplified, it says, Then the king spoke to the wise men who understood the times, asking for their advice. For it was the custom of the king to speak before all those who were familiar with law and legal matters. God's aware of the importance of acting in the right time. Yes. We need to ask him to help us do the same thing. In Galatians 4.4, 4, classic amplified, it says, But when in God's plan the proper time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the regulations of the law. Jesus didn't come too early. Too and late. That's it. He was right on time. On time. His own time. Amen. And we should rejoice because the Bible says we can redeem the time. This is what I was getting excited about. This is not Harold and Bev saying. That's right. The Bible says, the Word of God says that we can redeem the time. Amen. 
You know, mm, Ephesians 5.16, we talked about this, this in the King James, redeeming the time because the days are evil. According to Strong's Concordance, the Greek word for redeem is G1805. G1805, and it says it's to redeem by payment of a price to recover the power of another, to ransom, to buy off, to make wise, sacred use of every opportunity for doing good. Hallelujah. That's good. It is good. It's clear from Strong's definition that redeem means to repurchase time. So what does it mean about redeeming the time? God can actually make it up to us if we lose time because it says plainly in Joel 2, 25, classic amplified I'm reading it from, says, and I will compensate you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the creeping locust, the stripping locust, and the gnawing locust, my great army which I sent among you. The King, Ver, uh, King James Version of Joel 2.25 says, I will restore to you the years. And additionally, I love this, uh, in Proverbs 6.31, in the classic Amplified, it says... One of well, our favorite. That's right. But when he, meaning the thief, is found, he must repay seven times what he stole. He must give all the property of his house, if necessary, to meet his fine. The enemy not only steals money and valuables, mm. he steals ideas, That's right. and yes, he even steals time. He does. Um, <laughs> but God repays it. I, I remember uh, I was going to write a book called uh, Till Death Do Us Till Part. Till Death Do Us Part. And I talked about it. I mean, I'm doing Meetings literally, all over the place. at that time I was doing probably 75 to 125 meetings a year, and I talked about it. And I remember being in Minneapolis, and I met a man who worked with a major publishing company there. And he said, what are you working on? And I told him. Four months later, that publishing company printed a book called Till Debt Do Us Part. And, you know. It is what it is. It is what it is. But God's made it up to me, and he'll make it up to us again That's right. and again. But God also steals ideas. Uh, that scripture about that, seven the times. The devil steals the ideas. When, yeah, the but, devil. And God yeah, makes it God, up to us. Yeah, not God, the devil. Thank you. <laughs> if, if you have an idea and the enemy steals it, mm. just thank God that he'll give you seven more ideas. Right. If he steals 10 minutes of your time, thank you, he'll give you 70 back, 70 minutes back. But it's a mindset mm -hmm. of thanking God and, and holding the enemy accountable. That's right. And moving from there, we continually pray for the sevenfold restoration of all the time that the enemy has stolen from us and wealth and from our things. partners. That's right. And wealth from our we partners as well. Stand in agreement with them. One last scripture, baby. Yeah, this is so good. You're going to love it. So we're going to end with this last scripture. It's in Proverbs 10 27. 10 27 in the Living Bible. It says in part where it starts reverence for God adds hours to each day. Hallelujah. He does, you know, yep, good does. living, good living. That's we need to I maximize call. our time, the things we're doing, yep. because God's faithful. Amen. But the whole point of this teaching is to make sure you're in God's timing. Yeah. Something can be a good idea, a great idea, God idea, but it needs to be in His timing in order to make it happen. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. That's good. Pray for a friend of ours, Miss Linda. Yes. I've known her 30 years. I'm an only child, but she's the closest I've ever had to a sibling. And uh, her mother passed away last night. Amen. So I pray for her family and all those involved. Amen. Amen. Until tomorrow morning, rich thoughts for breakfast. Tomorrow morning's going to be good. Yeah, they're always the good. The title of tomorrow morning is three times God doesn't want you to tithe. Three times God doesn't want you to talk. That's a good one. You may be surprised about it, but that's a good teaching. It is a good teaching, so tune in. And if you've been blessed tonight, take your mouse, move to the top where it says sow a seed. Just ask God what seed he wants you to put in the ground. Do what he says. And, uh, I also want to say to you, if you get emails from us, hmm. tomorrow morning, you know, you're going to receive an email yes. of an incredible revelation the Lord gave me. Mm. 
been working on it, haven't we? We have. It's not only life-changing, it's thought-provoking. Yes. And you'll get the email. If you don't get our emails, if you send me an email to herald at heraldherring.com, we'll make sure you get it. That's it. If you don't do internet or emails, then call 817-222-0011 and just say, would you please send me a hard copy of that email and we'll get it to you. Amen. It'll be coming to you tomorrow. If you don't see it and you've been getting emails, check your spam filter because uh, it's coming. Hallelujah. Devil don't like it. I can tell you he won't anyway. like it. It's coming anyway. <laughs> Anyhow, a good one. thank you for your support of the ministry. Amen. Thank you for your prayers. Join us tomorrow morning and every morning at 8.30 Eastern. And until then, mm. God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Good night.